In all my years of enjoying fantasy stories, I never thought I'd be able to say, that is an attractive dwarf. Keely got it out of me though. Plus, he's pretty damn badass. An Unexpected Journey, Part 1 of the Hobbit Trilogy. So yeah, The Hobbit is a movie that I've been waiting for for pretty much since the release of Return of the King in 2003. So I've had a few years to get hyped up for this. Plus, I think The Hobbit might be my favorite book in the series. Either that or Return of the King. But something about The Hobbit always gets me. Maybe it's the childhood nostalgia I have for it, but I just have a connection to it. I don't think it's a stretch to say that it's the most fast-paced of the books, which is something that, conversely, cannot be said about the movie. An Unexpected Journey is a fairly slow film, even by Lord of the Rings standards. It takes a long while to get started, and it goes on a very leisurely pace throughout the whole film. This is hardly a bad thing though. I personally love long movies. I typically wish that more films were longer. It does feel drawn out at times, and if you're somebody that doesn't like that, this will obviously bother you. But for me, I can recognize that it's drawn out, but I like it. I don't have a problem with that at all, so to me, it's actually a plus. And the length and pace is especially not a problem when you have such an interesting world and bunch of characters to occupy you. First off, the dwarves. The dwarves are cool. Some of them are cooler than others, of course, and there are always the three that you really find yourself attached to, my boy Kiwi being one of them for me. But you do care about each of them at least a little, and I think that's actually a big thing that this movie has over the book. In the book, there were just so many of them, and they all had such similar names that you kind of lost track and didn't really care too much about them. The movie has the benefit of being able to see the characters and remember them visually. This really helps solidify them as characters that you know and care for. And of the dwarves, their prince, Thorin Oakenshield, it is the bomb. He's one badass dude, and he's a fantastic leader of the company. The actor who plays him, Richard Armitage, does an awesome job in the role. He embodies the character, and the dude has like four other film credits on his resume, and I really hope this dude gets more work, because he's good. Then we have Gandalf, Gandalf the Grey though. This is a prequel, so it's before he fought the Balrog and leveled up and became the White Wizard. And it's really cool to get to see him like this again. I didn't realize how much I missed the Grey until this movie. Grey Gandalf was an interesting character. He's not so divine in this, he's not as all-powerful, he has doubts and fears and questions himself. It's a really nice perspective on him. But then when he does need to, he could still kick some serious ass with that staff and foe hammer. He's less supreme, but more rugged. That's cool with me. And then, of course, at last, we have the bravest little hobbit of them all, Bilbo Baggins. Now, Martin Freeman as Bilbo, he makes the flick. Without Bilbo in this movie, aside from not having a movie at all, or at least a very short one, this movie would not even be a quarter of its quality. Martin Freeman's Bilbo is this movie. He is the Hobbit in both title and value. He's lovable, charismatic, fearless, and cowardly. He's wonderfully diverse as a character, and that's what sets the movie apart. Compared to the original Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit doesn't appear to have much diversity. But appearances can be deceiving. Bilbo alone has enough diversity to exist with the first trilogy, and counting the dwarves in the mix as well, The Hobbit's main cast can certainly stand next to the mains in the Fellowship. But while we're comparing The Hobbit to The Lord of the Rings, as is natural to do really, this movie is much less dark than The Lord of the Rings. It's much more whimsical and comic even. Definitely comic. There's lots of humor bits with the dwarves, particularly Lowell Bomber's fat jokes. It sometimes seems like it's trying to sort of appeal to kids. This isn't necessarily a bad thing though. Appealing to kids doesn't automatically mean a decrease in quality. It can be more lighthearted than Lord of the Rings and still be good. And the book is the same way. Lord of the Rings is much darker than The Hobbit. But this movie does also retain some of the darkness of the originals. It tries to act like more of a prequel, referencing a lot of stuff and building up to what we saw in Lord of the Rings. It takes a lot of liberties with the source material, much in the way that the original three movies did, and I don't have a problem with this at all. I like it when film adaptations diverge. Why would I want to just go through the same exact story? Yeah, I can see it now, but I'd rather an adaptation spice things up and throw in new twists, make it a little more interesting for me. So long as it's done well, what's the problem? And The Hobbit does it well. Throwing in a lot more references to the Necromancer, to Sauron, than the book did, that's cool with me. Referencing the Nazgul, that's rad. And there's another thing they add in here. Another character. 
Someone else that I have to talk about now because it seems like every review is mentioning it. And that character is Radagast the Brown, played by the great Sylvester McCoy, the Seventh Doctor. Now a lot of people are comparing him to Jar Jar Binks, or a goofy character that the children are supposed to like. Which again, is in keeping with its more lighthearted spirit and appeal to kids. But with Radagast, I really didn't have a problem with him. Maybe it's my undying love for McCoy and the Seventh Doctor being my favorite of classic Doctor Who. But I liked him. He's silly, he's weird, he's a little hobo who lives in a forest with his animal friends. He's cute. The audience in my theater seemed to like him, or at least they loved his animal friends. Everybody awed at his little buddy Sonic the Hedgehog. So basically, Radagast is cool with me. He's not a racist stereotype like Jar Jar at least, and even if you do find him annoying, he's only in like five minutes of the movie, so it's not a big deal. He might have a bigger part down the line though, so I don't know, but for now, don't worry about it, it's all cool. But other than that, what else is there to say? The Hobbit is a fun, sweeping, lengthy romp. It's got likable and cool characters, it's exciting, it's epic, it's an adventure, and it's only just begun. I can't wait for the next one. I'm really interested to see what they do next, how far they take this, what all they change, expand upon, play with. It's really just a thrill alone to see this world come to life. What's not to enjoy about it? I will score The Hobbit An Unexpected Journey a 9 out of 10. It's a superbly grand flick. Go see it. It really is just so damn good to be back in Middle Earth. And now, the long wait for the second film. Until then, see ya. Boo, 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 boo.